Hi, everyone. I want to share a little solution that I put together probably in about seven minutes. Um, I love it when somebody gives me a little challenge, particularly when it's an employee and they've got awareness of what Nintex might be able to do, uh, but there's absolutely no chance there's an off the shelf to do it. Uh, and I want, I had that this week, Beck, our office coordinator, presented me with a unique challenge. We sent fruit and vegetable uh, boxes out uh, to employees. And now that everyone's remote, there's absolutely no guarantee that those people are going to be home. So what she wanted to do was kind of plan ahead a little bit with the delivery driver to make sure that we are only sending fruit and veg boxes to people who are going to be home. And now she could do this herself through the use of email and then logging everything in an Excel spreadsheet. And when she told me the requirements, my head was sort of going down towards uh, populating a SharePoint list and then exporting to Excel. But then I remembered that we've actually got a set of Excel actions within Nintex Automation Cloud. And I thought, oh, I'll have a stab at that. So I built a little workflow, as I said, took me maybe under 10 minutes to put this together. So we created a form and the form has the, basically the metadata that she's looking to capture. So name, address, mobile number, and will you be home to take the delivery? Yes or no. Now I've gone with the, of using a variable here to get the logged in user. It knows who I am and all I need to do is go to the specific URL to the form and it's gonna pre-populate that. I don't wanna make any assumptions that the people filling these forms in can spell their own names. So let's err on the side of caution there. And in a similar vein, I've used the address control that Nintex Forms has to, to do a quick Google Maps lookup. And that's a bit of validation too, because I'm gonna suspect that the delivery driver will also be using Google Maps to do the delivery. So we're, we're gonna be on the same page here. With my mobile number, I'm actually using the 10 digit format that Australian mobile phone numbers have. Now, if it's anything else, we could obviously go with something like a regular expression. If you wanted to capture international dialing codes, for instance, that's a nice and easy one to pop in. And I'll put a custom error message just in case somebody does nine digits uh, and, and misses one out. So my form is, is pretty straightforward. And then my workflow is equally as straightforward. I'm going to take that running um, piece of workflow information, which is the current date and time, and I convert that to a string to make it nice and easy for back at the Excel side to, to review. I'm gonna log these to the instance details. I do this as a bit of an administrative overhead just to make sure that I'm capturing the right things and that the workflow is doing what I expect it to do. And then we got into these Excel actions that we've got. So I thought these were pretty cool. And I want, I've always wondered uh, what, they, what they could be used for. And, and thanks to Beck, I've got a use case. So I did the get table rows. That's going to pull the information in. And obviously, you can then add that as an index. And what you actually get here is you get an object. So you get all of the current row information uh, into an object in, in Workflow. And the same goes for table columns. So if you have to do any manipulation or you have to delete, it's quite useful to know that. And then I'm using this insert table data as well. So it's actually grabbing the workbook. Uh, and mine's looking up a workbook that's stored on, on OneDrive. Obviously, uh, depending on what the connection that you connect to with, you're gonna get different workbooks. Even if you have multiple tables, you can select the different tables that you want to insert information into, and you can go as far as to use variables. So if you've put information in on a form that corresponds to a table in an Excel sheet, you can use that variable to pull um, the, the information. And then what I'm doing is I'm matching up the cells that I want with the information that I'm gonna populate. And what I mean by that is, if I look at the Excel spreadsheet, my fruit and veg test, I've got a name and address. So my name is logged in user here. The address, which is the formatted address is being pulled back from the Google Maps object when it goes through the form control. I've got my mobile uh, and I've got will you be home, which is a Boolean. So it's gonna be a true or false. And then I've got my date string to go in there as well. So let's have a, a quick um, run and we'll see if this actually works. So publish, so publishing the workflow and I'm just gonna jump straight into the form. Open that up. 
got my lovely Brighton Beach box background there. So nice and very Melbourne of me. I'm going to pop in an address. You'll see that it's already captured the employee name there. Uh, so we'll go with an address. Uh, the Nintex office at 595 Collins Street. Pop in a mobile number. This isn't mine, so don't try and prank call me. And will I be home for the delivery this month? So I'll say yes, I will be. And I can submit that off. Now that workflow is going to run. What I'm going to do is, and it's redirected me to nintex.com as well, which is nice and handy. So I can go up there and start a free trial if I'm really uh, interested in, in getting to grips with this specific solution. If I close my designer and go to my instances tab, we should see that that one's already running, which is great. It's captured all of the information. There's my formatted address true that I'm home, today's date, and it's just going through that Excel information. So I'll do a quick refresh. It's now inserting some table data. So it's actually managed to obviously contact that Excel spreadsheet within OneDrive. It's now going, uh, looking for the next available row as it does by default, and then it's going to insert the table data. So it's already completed. And I can guarantee that that would have done that quicker than I could have probably free typed it. I am going to open that fruit and veg delivery Excel spreadsheet just now, make sure that it's been updated. Let's just drag that in. There we go. So I've got my information as I would have expected. Colin Street, mobile, true, and today's date. So a little bit of a school day for me. Uh, it was nice to get to, uh, to grips with some new actions that I haven't used yet. And I'd like to thank Beck for presenting me with the little challenge of how we might be able to fix the solution. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.